Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady checking in with a weekly garden tour. As you can probably hear, I am still a bit under the weather, but I just tested negative for COVID, so it's not that. I think it's just an old fashioned head cold and it's just been a while and I've forgotten how, how much they suck. Um, but anyhow, I wanted to check in. It's not raining for the moment. You can see by the pavement, it's just kind of been gross and cold and drizzly all day. Not a very motivating day. But I did get out and um, kind of revealed the containers that I covered after Friday night's cold snap. We got to 21 degrees and all of the pots look fantastic that were covered. And I can't wait to show you how the uh, camellias fared that we covered with the big yellow bags. So let me turn this camera around and we will take a quick stroll. And our stroll companions include Sophia and Reginald who don't seem to mind, they are extra furry. Uh, they, they don't care that it's cold and wet. And I just wanted to show you um, here in the big cottage garden border, um, anemones that I planted a year ago are blooming. They bloomed last year as well. You can see a little better one here. They are so pretty. I love these. And of course the lettuce and violas that I transplanted a few weeks ago look good. I'm not seeing as much seedling germination as I'd like, but also think uh, it might be because the soil is cold, things are germinating more slowly. You can really see though that the self-sown cottage garden plants are really growing into their own. You can see how large, you know, these poppies are, bachelor buttons. Here is Larkspur right next to it, right here, this elongated leaf is Nigella. This is a classic poppy shot for everybody, literally right on the, on the edge next to the concrete. That is where poppies love to self sow. You see, there's a bunch more here. And I think someone uh, wrote this in a comment before. I think the real trick with poppies is they like undisturbed soil. And that's why not covering them helps so much. Like you're not disturbing the soil once the seed has been like hitting the ground. Now, I think that's really probably better way to articulate it is that the poppies prefer undisturbed soil. And you can see lots of daffodils. Um, only a few are starting to put up flower buds. So that's good. I was hoping this variety would wait a while longer. <laughs> Hate for everything to happen so early. Well, Prunus Mume season is pretty much over. Um, we'll see if we get any fruit set. 21 degrees might have caused the flowers to abort any sort of fruit production, we'll just have to see. You can see the multi-green border is looking green and the cats are really enjoying it. Ava Grace loves chewing on grains and actually Ava is short for Avino or Avina, um, the botanical name of oats. When she was a tiny kitten, oats were her favorite thing to nibble on. <laughs> She's giving us all serious side eye. Well, I had brought the window boxes in and mostly because this one has the best poppies. Like this is a picture that I'll use in presentations forever. Look at the poppy germination in that. Now this is filled with veggie mix from Soil Cube and Aiden and I direct seeded these poppies, I think the beginning of January. And there is a video showing us, showing us doing it. So you can use that as a reference. But I just couldn't bear the idea of these poppies potentially suffering. So I think it's completely ridiculous that they're in a window box, but I'm really excited to see how this turns out. And speaking of poppies germinating, you can see behind these crocus, um, really great. This was actually a fire ant mound, believe it or not, um, that the poppies are growing in. Well, hopefully you watched our video about 
mowing things down and you can see the electric mower doesn't really chop the stalks all that well but it certainly cuts everything down and for me this reveals kind of a layer of weeds that I'd like to prevent from going to seed so I'm gonna try uh, hopefully we have better weather I haven't actually looked but I do need to do some serious weeding and not a lot going on on the north side other than October Affair Camellia Japonica just keeps on putting out beautiful blooms despite the cold. So you can see definite cold damage from Friday night. Um, but there's still some buds that weren't impacted, so we'll still get some nice flowers off of this. I have some hellebore flowers to pick for floating arrangements. Look at all those blooms. This is a patch of all white hellebores. And I might let a few go to seed this year just because I wouldn't mind if this whole area got filled with hellebores. And don't you love a patch of crocus it's sort of ushering in a new season, so to speak, a season of ups and downs. You can see over here, not a lot to report really just none of the plants were really severely injured in the cold i did not cover any of my bulbs and they all look fine oh i haven't undone up here oh i i'm very optimistic that this pot will look just as good as it did the day i covered it oh ta-da I have to say, this trick for containers is really a game changer for me. I, I'm so pleased that um, that I thought of this and started doing it. So remember, it's just a tomato cage, and this is like a burlap coffee sack. Somebody brought this to me from a local coffee shop. They, they have these as excess, so I think they were free, and um, they're really practical. So. Maybe consider asking at your local coffee shop if they have any used burlap sacks. This is what the beans come in. Well, I have all of these covered. I won't bore you with undoing them all, but let's see. Oh yeah, that broccoli, totally unscathed. Excellent. Well, and as you can see, everything looks great in here. I'm super glad that I did cover them. It's because well, I really like all these plants and I love using the viola flowers in arrangements. And obviously, Sophia is demonstrating why they love to have grains included in their winter pots. Well, you can see the pink panther Prentice Mume is the, la the latest one. And the flowers are a bit damaged from Friday night. And they're also just sort of coming to an end. Plus, <laughs> nothing looks good with this sort of gloomy gray sky. And at the base of that, this Edgeworthia uh, came through the cold without any trouble. The flowers are a bit more hangy downy still, and that's a part of the cold, but they'll eventually raise their heads and nod, nod upright as more flowers come into bloom. If you walk back here, I'm super stoked to show you that the big yellow bags that we cut the bottoms out of worked like a charm for protecting these camellias from the cold. So you can see that um, Crimson Candles was totally covered and it is still in full bloom and looks beautiful. We, cover we covered this Roma Resorta, which is a really beautiful variegated one no trouble at all but you could see in contrast that you know across the way flowers got a lot of cold damage so i'm super happy that we actually covered those up and that they worked so well okay edgeworthy alert um this is i can't wait to have blue skies in general but just to be able to take photographs of this plant at this stage, I love when the blooms are open about halfway. Now all of those buds in the middle will continue to open. 
So this is, this is really like the halfway stage. Uh, I definitely am going to be harvesting some of these today to bring in to enjoy for uh, indoor arrangements. So many flowers. It's so awesome. Well, it's a little bit cold to be out here and I am not feeling 100%. So I'm gonna bid you all adieu. I hope that you have a fantastic week. And as always, I really appreciate that you tune in for these weekly garden tours. I look forward to sharing another update with you next week. Thanks for watching everybody.